Hey everyone, and welcome back to Mutant Year Zero. Let's go left to right in the arc here, and then let's go get on a mission, shall we? Wanna know how this goes down? For the right price, I fix and upgrade your shitty gear. Any questions? <laughs> Look at that eight inch monitor with the joystick on the left. <laughs> go back on the video if you guys didn't see it. It's hilarious, like an eight inch monitor with like an eight inch joystick. Uh, in any event, what do we got here? Remove it. This is for the attachments. I see. 33 weapon parts available. Oh, so... If, oh. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. So this is where we can spend our weapon parts to upgrade our gun. Let's attach the scope to the crossbow. I mean, I think that's a no-brainer. So that's going to give us 20% added range. Great. Next up. I could also put the burninator on it, but I don't necessarily think that's a smart decision. Or is it, actually? It might be. Um, one additional crit damage. Well, let's come back here and look what this is. So we're currently at one. To go to two gets us one extra damage. And also plus one crit damage. Five. So from four to five to five to six. We can only upgrade one gun. Here's a question. What about the gapper? Can destroy covers. That's really good. Knocks back enemies. That's really good. We can knock people out. So we should probably make this our primary weapon on I thought it was a rocket launcher but looking at it now I think it's just a normal gun so we could put this on there one additional crit damage although we only have five percent crit but 50 percent chance to burn enemies hmm not sure if I do this we get one damage one crit seems to be very similar boy that's a lot you know what I think I'm gonna go for this let's get the gapper here going maximum wow Wish I had seen that before. I wasn't looking at it. That's cool. Uh, but let's do that. And then on the crossbow, I think we'll attach the burninator. It does seem fitting because I, I, I basically am ducks. So this looks good. I'm glad I came here. That's all of our weapon parts. Keep your head screwed on. What's next? After a killer day in the zone, you know you can always come to Prips for some high quality grog. You want to get loaded? Order a shot. No butane, no bleach, only natural ingredients. I also dabble in a little uh, antiquity trading. So if you find any cool artifacts out in the wasteland, bring them to me and I might give you something in return. Comprende? All right. Um, one artifact point available. This is, is that from the radio we recovered? So our options are extend crew bleed out time by two turns. Very useful. Mule unlocks an extra grenade slot per crew member. Mm, given that they're consumable, we won't have too many of them, I don't think. Deal maker grants a 20% discount at Aridia's shop. <gasps> Pyromania plus one fire damage to Molotovs. Technophobe. All right. Um. Escape back. The only thing to do here is escape. She is. Huh. Can I, can I check my inventory? Yes, I can. Scatter gun. We need to go check Aridia's shop before I decide on that one. Let's make our weapon number one the gapper. Ooh, nice. Now, weapon number two, a long range stinger, is probably a little bit better. This is damage eight. This is damage ten. Ooh, let's put the armor here on Borman. Looking up here, it's he, it seems like we're not healed at present. So use med pack, actually. Should I do that now? Or I'm guessing we're never going to heal if I don't. And I'm guessing also it uses it just for one character. I should probably wait then, since we have the armor. I think we can survive. Oh, here's grenades. Let's go for a hand grenade. So we got a hand grenade and a Molotov here. Gapper and the stinger, beautiful. On ducks, we got the crossbow. Not sure we necessarily need the stinger. Maybe a close range scatter gun would give him. Range 10, just a second, some kind of different option, right? Like get up close. He's got a long range crossbow and a close range scatter gun. Might work out for him. Let's see why I wouldn't want to do that. Give him a, the Molotov. No armor. Oh, here we go. Use artifacts to buy points in the arc. Um, uh, 
doesn't seem like there's really anything to do with it that I can understand, so. I wonder how you heal without using the medkits, because I really don't want to use them. Anyway, let's go over here to Iridia's shop now. You know the drill. Stalkers want gear that keeps them alive. I, Iridia, provide the gear. See anything you like, just let me know. There is one rule. Don't ever, ever pull my chain. If you pull my chain, I'll feed your ding-dongs to a zone wolf. Got that? Oddly Beautiful. specific. Happy shopping. Here's an interesting thing I just noticed. This guy out here on the bike, he's just a casual guy riding a bike in the back room. I like that. The ambience of that. Just like, hey, there just happens to be a guy here riding a bike. You know, nothing to see here. No reason to think about it. Let's see what we've got. Um, 55 for scrap. That's expensive. 65 for one Molotov. 25 for a smoke. 55 for a med kit. And 150 for a pipe gun. Oh, this, there's more. Ancient site. Well, we just had, wow, 150. Good thing we found one of those. Use the workbench in the arc to attach this. The pipe gun. This is a long range gun. Which has three ammo, which is kind of nice. But I think I want to buy these, which means I'm pretty Until sure. Next time. Boy, that shop is really detailed. Have a seat. Mutants get a discount. Yeah, let's do this. So we're gonna exchange our one artifact to get a discount over there. Oh, you need all three of these to get this one. I see. You have a swell time out there. Thanks, Pip. Pip, rather. My favorite stalkers. So fifty-five I to forty-four. I was just reclining here, dreaming of when I'd see you again. I guess dreams do come. There we go. Until next time. All right, and then the elder, and then we're on a mission. My home will always be a haven to you, brave stalkers. After your journeys, pay me a visit, and I'll offer you some guidance, perhaps a story, to help you become wise and strong. <laughs> Look, there's another guy in the background just doing pacing laps. This guy's got like a tin can on the right. With like an old soda bottle filled with vodka and a bunch of pill bottles. And he's got his own custom like blood bag repository. This is amazing. He has huge hard drive on the bottom left. Wow. Warning. Quarantine area. Farewell. Remember your elder's guidance. Boy, that guy talks slow. Slow, slow, slow. I guess we're done. Uh, unless I want to heal, which I don't think we can always heal... In combat, I think we only heal for four, but I think we're only down by four points anyway, so. We did all these three. This is level 25. We're like level two. So to Haman's cabin, we go. That was actually pretty cool. I just noticed that the camera, uh, it was focused on the road. So like the, the normal loading bar indicator you get. Like, a, just usually it's like a 0 to 100% bar or something, or a circle in some games. In this game, it's actually like your camera going along the road to the de destination. That's a... Thanks for signing me up back there, you crazy pig. Yes, Mr. Elder. Sign us up for a suicide mission, Mr. Elder. Did you forget there's like a kajillion ghouls out here who want to kill us? Nobody gets to kill you but me now. Shut the duck up and keep moving. I'm telling you, Borman, ain't no happy ending in this story. Stalkers don't get happy endings. We get each other. So watch my back. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, that's a really cool attention to detail thing they added to the game. Very, very minor, but such a cool thing. Look how awesome that log looks. Uh, where do we need to go? We need to go over... Th whoa, whoa. The heck? We need to come over here. But I want to go the opposite direction. I want to be like a completionist playthrough. And go through everything, find... Ev oh, there it is. Get rid of the light. Get a little bit closer. Zone dog. 10 hit points, level 5. Yeah, I want to go everywhere and find everything um, on every map. They don't seem to be that big, so it shouldn't take that long. But I could edit it out if you guys want. 
Or alternatively, if you don't mind watching a couple of minutes as I... Ooh, is that the same one? Yes. No. No, actually, there's two. That is not the same one. Um, okay, let's get over here and hide. And I'm, I think we're just going to have to ambush. Yep, go right now before it saw us and ambush us. I do love how they force you into ambushes in real time. That's so awesome. And if you... It's completely under your control. Like, you just don't get yourself in a position where you're going to get forced in. Uh, you know, just be very careful and walk around carefully and suss out the situation if you don't feel comfortable reacting very quickly. So there's a very good mechanic. I like it a lot. In any event, what do we got here? Crossbow hits for four. We got a scatter gun that hits for five. I see no reason not to use this. The other one is over there. It's probably going to hit us, so... I'm, I'm pretty sure the game has sound ranges. So let's go as far away as we can get without blocking here, but still get 100% with the scatter gun. Looks like right there is as good as we can do. The reason I'm going to get further away is to reduce the chance of the other dog hearing us. Then, ducks was caught sneaking, yeah. Then we're going to use our 100% here on zone dog. Does that hurt? <laughs> Literal shotgun to the face. Let's activate over here. 100% uh, from right there. That's all I need. Look at that beautiful gapper, friends. Fire, make a big gap right in the torso of this zone dog, Foreman. Sleep. Beautiful. Oh, man, that was my shot. Hey, that worked. The other dog didn't hear me. Huh? This is stuff from, like, Long War 2, like the sound ranges, managing your sound ranges so things don't hear you and activate. Let's go for a hit point over here. One Borman. Oh, look at his snout. And, I, ooh, two movement. Heck yeah, we'll take that on ducks for sure. That'll help him get in range to use his um, shotgun. And also help him get in position for flanks. This is beautiful, beautiful. I like it a lot. This game is actually really, really cool. Let's hit F here. Hey, follow me. Have ducks follow follow me. It's just XCOM 2 Long tried to have campsite, like hundreds of others across the zone, filled with the ghosts of humans who were foolish enough to try to survive out here. At least that's what the elder says. Look at this, yeah. I just <laughs> look at he's just sitting there with a grenade in his hand, literally. Anyway, XCOM 2 tried to add, like, a stealth phase to the game so you could do cool things, but it always felt, like, wonky and very gamey to me. Like, you could just exploit it. This feels interactive and fun and balanced, and if you're if you're not good, like, if you're slower or you're distracted, you have kids or whatnot, you don't have to worry about um, the real-time overwhelming. You just be more careful and stay further back and, like, take more time to figure out what's going on. Whereas I like danger. I want to run right in there and get myself into a predicament and see how I can get myself out. This is a cool looking house, though. But anyway, compared to XCOM 2, I really enjoy the stealth mechanics of this game. Anything over here? I don't think so. Oh, hey. We should check Hammond's cabin like the Elder asked us to. Okay, I'm guessing I need to go over there when we're done. But since I'm going, like, literally in an opposite circle around our objective. Look at this. Look at this little bike over here. I'll buy a little tent under these vines. This huge vines. Those remind me of Zone in World of Warcraft, but I can't remember the name of it. Let me know in the comments if you remember the name of that zone. Ooh, look at this. Whoa, check this thing out. It must have crashed. Look at this symbol on the side. It's like a star. <laughs> this guy's voiceover. It's literally like my voiceover. I don't even need to talk. I said that right before. I was like, whoa, look at this. And he's like, whoa, whoa, look at this. It's a star. Really cool, though. I do like how similar to me that duck is. I think we're just about done here. What's this, the cabin? 
Oh, oh, we see some enemies over there. Yeah, that's definitely the cab. Okay, let's go into stealth here. The heck? Shaman. Level 5 Marauder. He's got four hit points. Interesting. That's it. Hammond's cabin. Let me guess. That's not Hammond inside. Hunter. Ten hit yes. points. Ghouls. We chase everything, but there are no secrets. Where are the secrets? The ones in the north will catch Hammond and squeeze the secrets from his head. Hammond will tell us what the junk is for. The junk is for us. <laughs> All of it. Uh-oh. 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 The junk is for us. All of it. Okay. see if they move yep there we go um let's go for the we're gonna go for the crossbow maybe if he gets close enough uh oh we're not gonna have a chance we're gonna have to go now we don't have any choice we have to go now he's about to spot borman let's activate ducks hopefully 100 percent. oh thank god i got that scope which by the way you can barely see it when the animations move up you can actually physically see the scope on the crossbow because that pushed that, it would have been a 75, and now it's a 100, I think. Because our range is longer. In any event, crossbows ahoy, ducks! Bye-bye. <laughs> Seriously! I'm like, whoo, he's like, whoo! The guy's literally a duck version of me. It's crazy. So these guys both have 10 hit points. What are we going to do? Um, the hunter has a scope and like a long-range gun. The shaman, I don't know what he does. He's got a bugle of sorts on his back. So my guess is he shatters your eardrums or it shoots fire or something. I'm not sure. I'm going to come over here with everybody. I think I can turn my light on and just move faster till I get over here. All right, how do I do this now? So the shaman's got 10 hit points. I can hit for seven. We can hit for three over there. It's, whoa, 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 let's not screw it up. I don't think, okay. That's, yeah, I think we're gonna have to ambush by moving up on him. The hunter is going to have long range. He can see us. We're going to need to flank this guy, though. We can't come at him from the front direction where the hunter is because this uh, shaman would have cover. Like, he has cover versus the hunter right now. So, whoa. So maybe we move over here. This is the best place to ambush that I can figure out. We're not going to have high cover, but we'll have options. We can move here, and we have a 75. We can move here. We have a 75. These things are unfortunately not cover, but they are 100%, or we can move here and have 100, but then the hunter can see. Actually, it says no line of fire. Oh, okay. Well, if that's the case, let's go for it then. All right, he is alerted to our presence. It's time to give him a bit of the old gap in the face. <laughs> Apparently cover is destructible. Uh, if you even just fall into it. Okay, so we knocked him back into the cover, and I don't think he actually moved, but he destroyed the cover. That's very good knowledge. So if someone is knocked back into cover, it destroys the cover, and he stays where he is. Now, we gotta finish him up. What's our chance to hit from here at 70, whoops, 75? We need to get closer. We can move here, move here, still 75. There we go, 100%. We'll move ducks up. Yeah, he's spotted and crossbows ahoy, friends. Well, so good. We'll have to figure out what he does in the future, because I guess we're not finding out today. Interesting. I have an idea. So we don't get st normally in XCOM I go here to get a step out flank, but we don't get that here. So I can go here though, and 100 percent that's beautiful. Borman, up you go, buddy. And Gapper to the face. 
<laughs> Look at him slowly get back up. Now, the great thing about that is we just knocked him out of cover. So ducks with this insane mobility can move up and just be like, I don't need to reload. Chuck him to the face! Wow. Serves you right. That was insanely cool. That was just straight up cool. Get over here. All right, we got a med kit. No a ton. So this is a weapon mod, which gives us one crit damage and 30% chance to disable robots. So I guess there's going to be robots in the game. Here we got a far to look at. This tube-like object gives its user the ability to view distant objects up close. Might also come in handy as a weapon if you get in a tight spot. This is Hammond's far looker. Let's bring it back to prep before the ghouls take it. That name is all. Oh, whoops, I just cut him off. Um wrong. It should be a smaller fire, because when I looked into it, everything became smaller and more distant. Amazing what the ancients could make. Smaller fire. What's actually amazing is I wanna. I want to see what the game says about mundane items like a telescope or a boom box. Like, I can't wait to see the how the ducks and the pig react to it. Let's go see what that note was. Zone dog camp. As the seasons pass, I'm forced further out into the zone to find even the most basic of objects. From time to time, I stumble across the odd hidden place, even in locations I imagined were already cleaned out by stalkers seasons ago. One such place is to be found due west of the fallen machine. There appears to be the remains of an ancient camp, complete with transportable hut. The location is currently home to a pack of zone dogs, who for some reason tolerate my presence near to their breeding grounds. They pick off wandering ghouls and I leave them alone. This unusual symbiosis works for me quite well. All right. So to the west, there's a transportable hut. And over here, we've got the far looker. Use artifact points to buy upgrades. Can we? Oh, and over here, we have the weapon mod. Cool. And I think we're actually, I think that's the objective over there. Let's go grab this last piece of loot first. And that's it. I think we did the whole map. Can I actually zone map? No, there's no way to see. I hit Z here, we can see there's nothing really left to do for objectives anyway. I think we're done. That was really cool, though. Can't wait till the game gets more complicated. Zone ghouls stripped this cabin clean. Almost everything useful was gone. But it's a good thing ghouls can't read. They ignored the diary hidden inside Hammond's desk. Me and Duck aren't big readers either. But we look for answers in the diary. And all we get is more questions. Hammond writes how he found the crash machine near his cabin. He's convinced the machine was sent as a message from a mythical place beyond the zone called Eden. Where everybody's happy and safe. When Hammond sees another machine fall north of here, he takes his stalker crew up there to find it. I close the diary. Here's the problem. Eden's a fairy tale. Some bedtime story mutants believe in, so they can get to sleep at night. So either Hammond is onto something, or his brain's got the rot, and he's about to kill a bunch of good stalkers. Guess we gotta find out. Me and Ducks have to go north. Farther from home than we've ever been. It's dangerous. Ducks thinks I'm crazy to press on. I don't disagree with him. His brain's got the rot. I don't care about some stupid Eden. But we need to find Hammond. And if he's going north, we're going north. If he's going north, that makes him a grade A certified loony. No one goes up there, Borman. And what's with those two stalkers he took with him? They should know better. They're following orders, just like us. The Ark can't run without Hammond, so we're bringing him back. Especially with ghoul packs coming this far south. Wonder what they're planning. Mm, ghouls are too dumb to plan. Someone's pushing them down here. I'm feeling in my feathers. 
I could have sworn I heard another. <gasps> Whoa, I did sign another zone dog. Okay, uh, shut the light off. Let's get a little bit closer. Let's go take him out, right? Free experience. How did I miss this one before? Um, I don't have a clue, but regardless, we're good to go. Let's get ducks up here. The only thing that could make this game better is ammo. I personally... What's happening? Oh, there we go. I personally love games where you have to manage ammo and shells and forces you to, like, change weapons all the time and do different stuff. Um, I can understand that most people don't like that, but in any event, let's go for it. Zone dog, 100%. Shotgun to the face. Yeah, I did that. What do you think about that, huh? This guy's the best. What do you think about that, huh? I shot him in the face. What do you think? What do you think about it? I did that. 100% gapper. Stay down. How did we not kill this guy before, I wonder? Huh. Oh! I'm just now realizing there's a really hey, big me. strategy to making sure we've got our kills for our abilities, because I see underneath the image por portraits here, two and three. So I should be splitting these kills up to make sure we... Um, we get all of our cooldowns. Yeah, we were we were over here before, so huh. I don't have a clue how I missed that dog. Anyway, I love this game. This is it's just it's just fantastic. I can't wait to see more. The only thing I'm worried about is replayability. I'm, it's probably no replayability really for me. I never play story-based games twice. But I mean, imagine if they had an expansion, I would be all over that. I would love to just buy an expansion to this every week. It's incredible. But in any event, I don't know how long the episode's been going on. It's probably a little on the shorter side. But before we go on to the next zone, this is probably a half-decent place to stop. And I'll just get on to making the next one. So, having a lot of fun so far. Anyways, thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon. And Gapper to the face. <laughs> Look at him slowly get back up. Now, the great thing about that is we just knocked him out of cover. So Ducks, with his insane mobility, can move up and just be like, I don't need to reload. Shotgun to the face! Wow.